Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of R3 Stem Cell. Today's topic is the basics of an IRB study. An IRB, which stands for Institutional Review Board, is a group formally designated to protect the rights, safety, and well-being of humans that are involved in a clinical trial by reviewing all aspects of the trial and approving its startup. It does not necessarily have to be an FDA clinical trial. It can just be a research project being done by student, hospital, what have you. Why were IRBs formed? Well, there were a lot of research abuses in the 20th century, such as the Nazi experiments in World War II, uh, the Tuskegee syphilis study, where patients were not properly informed of what was going to be happening to them, the Stanford prison experiment. So as a result of these um, ridiculous abuses of patient rights, the 1970s Belmont Report outlined the primary ethical principles in human subjects review. These include the three tenets of respect for persons, beneficence, and justice. So now studies must ensure that risks to subjects are balanced by the potential benefits to society. In July of 1974, the passage of the National Research Act established the National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects of Biomedical and Behavioral Research. Wow, I'll say that 10 times real fast. All right, on a federal level, uh, the IRB review assures compliance with federal regulation uh, 45, uh, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 46, essential to conducting human research and protects both your subject's rights and your institution's ethical and legal responsibilities. So the IRBs themselves are regulated under the purview of the Department of Health and Human Services. So there are two bodies that have developed accreditation standards for IRBs. One is the National Committee for Quality Assurance and the Association for the Accreditation of Human Research Protection Programs. So the accreditation indicates that your organization follows rigorous standards for ethics, quality, and protections for human research. So typically what will happen is whoever wants to do the study will go to an IRB and that IRB will then oversee the study and that IRB has accreditation from one or both of these groups. So when does a study need an IRB review? Uh, if someone's about to conduct research involving human subjects that will obtain data through intervention or interaction with the individual, a subject's identifiable private information, records gathered on human subjects, or samples of human tissue, then you will need IRB approval of all human subjects protection protocols before the study can begin. Now, when it comes to levels of review, there are three of them. Projects that involve human subjects can be reviewed at one of three levels according to the federal regulations. Those levels are either one exempt, two expedited, or three full committee review. Now, the research may qualify for exempt status if it involves very minimal or no risk to patients. Now, an expedited review does not mean it's a quick review that skips steps. It means if it involves no more than minimal risk to the participants and it meets some other standards, such as no deception involved um, or other uh, vulnerable uh, participants, things like that. A full review is any proposed research that doesn't qualify for the other two, uh, in which a majority of the IRB members review and vote on the proposal. For an expedited review, it may be that you know, only one person um, in the group reviews it. So who makes up an IRB? Well, it leads to be at least five members, and these members should have varying backgrounds. At least one member must represent a non-scientific area, a lay member of society. And at least one member must not be affiliated with the institution or the trial site. Competent members who are able to review and evaluate the science, medical aspect, and ethics of the proposed research trial. Now, elements of the review that may be under the purview of the IRB could be obviously the clinical protocol, uh, the informed consent, any outcome instruments that the patient will be filling out either uh, verbally or online or whatnot, and then the advertising materials uh, such as you see here on the right. Now, what are the benefits of an IRB review? Number one is that it protects human subjects so they are not exposed to unnecessary risk. And it ensures that patients are advised of the risks and benefits that they'll be facing. It also protects vulnerable populations. We're talking about uh, children, prisoners, women who are pregnant, those with diminished mental capacity, etc. 
It ensures protection of patient data and confidentiality. It has provisions for reporting adverse events should they occur. There are regular reviews to ensure compliance with the protocol. It makes sure that the risks are acceptable compared to the benefits that are possibly achieved. Overall, it applies a standard operating procedure to a study review so patients are protected before, during, and after the study. So at R3, we truly want to make a difference in patients' lives by helping them avoid surgery and remain as active as desired. Our affiliated centers of excellence are located nationwide and offer first-rate regenerative treatments. Treatments are offered under an IRB protocol. We have one in place. We're having a second one in the next uh, uh, short period of time. Simply visit us today online at r3stemcell.com or call us at 844-GET-STEM. Thank you for watching.